Warning, some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Nyonstar here, and I've been to the hospital many times. So many. Too many. And since my video on seizures is one of my most viewed videos, I thought I'd talk about my hospital and doctor visits in more depth. I went to the doctor pretty regularly as a kid. We went about once a year for checkups and vaccinations. Just a side note, but I love science and being healthy, so go get vaccinated. I didn't have this opinion as a kid, though. I hated getting my shots. I have a fear of needles, and I'd often have to be held down to get vaccinated. I remember having three shots in my legs while my parents held me to the table, tears clogging my throat. And when I got older, the shots moved from my legs to my arms. And the most memorable one was when I freaked the hell out. My parents had warned me in advance that I was getting a shot, so I started scheming. My plan was to run out of the doctor's office, jump in the car, and drive home. I don't know why I didn't consider that I didn't have the car keys, I couldn't actually drive, or what would happen to me when my parents got home. It didn't matter in the end, because when I started screeching and running for the door, I was restrained by every adult in the room. I screamed so loud you could probably hear me down the street. I ended up wearing myself out and getting my shot. The best part? After it was over, I said, that wasn't so bad. To go on a slight tangent, I loved the pediatrician's waiting room. When you walked in, there was a tropical fish tank built into the wall. Across from the sign-in desk, there was a drinking fountain, and next to that was this foam playset. There were also seats for you to wait in, but beyond that was a shelf full of various knickknacks, like an armadillo figure. We'd have to wait here after we got vaccinated to monitor if we had any side effects. And after waiting for a half an hour or more to get seen, I'd get a checkup from our GP. He'd been our pediatrician since I was born. I remember that he'd check our ears and pull a coin from behind them when he was done. My parents told me he started going senile towards the end, but I can't remember. He was old when I was born, so I don't know if he's even still alive. When I had my first seizure, my dad picked me up from school and took me to our doctor. I threw up in the parking lot. My doctor said he didn't know why I'd had a seizure, so he just sent us home. When I had the maybe seizure in the dentist's office the year before, he said that I probably just winded myself. I don't know, I don't think you roll your eyes back and convulse when you get winded. Later on that year, which I believe was fall break, I woke up one night in horrible pain. My head felt like it was being crushed. I couldn't sleep the whole night, and I cried all night. In the morning, my sister eventually heard my wailing and alerted our parents. I think I was just having a very intense migraine, but I knew my parents wouldn't take me very seriously. So what I told them was that I'd gone to the kitchen for a drink, slipped and hit my head. I was also so out of it that I might have thought that this was true. I can't really remember that day all that well. It felt like I had a concussion. My parents just left me to it, and I managed to pass out eventually. I had a dream where I was laying on the side of the road next to my school, and I couldn't move. A bike came out of nowhere and hit me, and the weirdest part was I felt it. My ribcage and stomach felt like they'd been hit, even though it was just a dream. I tried to tell my mom about it, but she was convinced I was hallucinating. After I couldn't eat any dinner, my parents asked if I wanted to go to the hospital. I agreed immediately and they took me over. I'd never been to a hospital before, so it was pretty scary. Like when they had to hook up an IV. My sister told me that getting an IV was like 10 shots at once. And despite the fact she'd never had one and was just making stuff up, she was pretty accurate. Apparently IVs aren't supposed to hurt, but I almost faded when I got mine inserted. I'm gonna stop talking about this now, because when I was writing this part of the script, I got dizzy thinking about it and had to lay down. I also got an MRI and a diabetes test, which also hurt more than it probably should have. Maybe I just have low pain tolerance. I also had to pee in a cup. But they cleared me and sent us home. Thank God we had Medicaid. Going back to my seizures, I had to undergo several tests to try and figure out what was wrong with me. The worst ones were the blood draws. For my first blood draw, I was warned in advance. I was shaking in my boots for weeks. One day after school, my dad said we had to go to the hospital for my mom or something, and I just believed him. 
When we were at the sign-in desk and my dad started giving them my info, I put the pieces together. I was laid in a cot and had that rubber tie around my arm to get the blood down. Then I started crying. I put my hand over my arm and begged for the nurse to just wait one more minute. Eventually I had to just suck it up and let the nurse take my blood. Then I got an orange juice. And from what my dad told me years later when I asked, they didn't even find anything. The other test I got was an EEG. This is when they attach electrodes to your scalp to detect epilepsy and other brain stuff. I had to stay awake late, so my dad watched Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses with me. In the morning, they attached the electrodes to my scalp and had me sleep. And once again I asked my dad about it years later, and he said they never found anything. And then I got a second blood draw. I don't remember much about this one, except that my sister had to have her blood drawn too. I asked her if she remembered why she had to get one too, and she said she didn't know. And our dad wouldn't let her eat beforehand, and that did not end well. Once I was done with mine, I heard that Dee ended up fainting. She blacked out and all the nurses freaked out. They seemed very relieved when she came to. We still joke to this day that she died on the cot. I didn't go to the hospital much after that, only stopping by to get my mother's chemo medication. The next time we went was when I almost had a seizure in high school. I'd missed a whole week of school, and my dad gave me the ultimatum to either suck it up or go to urgent care. So I went to urgent care. They once again put an IV in me, and I remember the nurse trying to distract me by asking what bands I listened to. I panicked and said, Panic at the disco! I know one song by them. They left me alone for a while, popping in to give me some headache medication through my IV, which stung a little. I had to hold my dad's hand for both the insertion and the meds. After the IV bag drained, they just patched me up and sent us home, and I had to pee in a cup again. I did feel better after being hydrated, but it was just a temporary solution. Now something I've neglected to mention is my thyroid. For as long as I can remember, I've had a lump around and under my Adam's apple. Which, for the record, everyone has an Adam's apple, not just men like what I was told as a kid. But anyway, that lump was an inflamed thyroid, a gland in your neck that produces hormones. My mom noticed it when I was around 9, and she'd bring it up to every doctor I went to. They'd put their fingers on my neck and ask me to swallow, but they never seemed too concerned about it. For 10th grade, the month or two I was in school, I went to the school-based health center to find out why I'd been so dizzy at school. They recommended that I get an ultrasound on my neck. The nurse slathered my neck in jelly and held the device to my throat. It kind of freaked me out to see my pulse on the screen, so I turned away so I didn't have to look at it. They didn't find anything concerning, so I was sent home again. Back at the school-based health center, I had to take my third blood draw. I go into more detail about it in my video about dropping out, but in short, they tried to draw from both of my arms and I almost fainted. I had to go through the rest of the day with both of my arms bandaged up. And I didn't even get an orange juice this time. I actually got to see the results this time, and it said I was low on a hormone. I can't remember which one it was, but I think it was one of these. I asked the nurse about it, but she said that it was nothing to be worried about. I looked it up when I got home, and when the thyroid makes a low amount of whatever hormone it was, it causes hypothyroidism, which is pretty bad. I have no idea if I actually have hypothyroidism, and I can't check because we don't have health insurance anymore. I'd also probably have to get my blood drawn again. Moving on, after my agoraphobia got so bad mid-pandemic that I couldn't go outside, we were recommended to visit a psychiatrist. We called a medical transport service and rode to the edge of town. It was a pretty big building. The first floor was surrounded by glass and there were several floors. I remember there being a small and dirty fish tank on the upper floor. We went through a bunch of sign-in desks, and I had to get my pressure tested, which I always hate. And in the end, we sat in an empty room to have a Zoom meeting. We really could have done that at home. I got prescribed some meds, and I had semi-regular meetings at home to discuss it. It ended up not mattering in the end, because my dad moved us all to Texas, and we couldn't use our health insurance anymore. The only other thing I can think of for hospital settings is the nurse's office at school. I went there a lot in elementary school because I was a very sickly kid, and I think the nurses got sick of me. My dad insists that I'm not immunocompromised, so I don't know why I was sick so often. And we didn't go to the doctor if I was sick. 
I've seen on TV that they'd go to the doctor for a cold or flu or something like that, but in my house, you either got better or died. Survival of the fittest. In the present day, I haven't been to the doctor in a long time. And I probably should, since I haven't had a checkup since maybe middle school. Just so long as I never have to have anything inserted into my veins ever again. I still have a scar from the last blood draw, and I get freaked out whenever anyone touches that part of my arm. But anyway, thank you so much for watching! I have a whole video about dealing with seizures, and I'd appreciate it if you gave it a watch. Stay safe and get vaccinated! Bye!